previously on ICTBC. This will be our book choice for March. This is going to be for our detective or true crime category. It's a murder within a murder. Okay. Anthony Horowitz started as a teen writer, hmm. and he did the Alex Ryder series. Oh, okay. Such good writing for action. So I am super jazzed about us reading this one. I don't know where Sarah's at. I'm Librarian Racine. Hey Racine. I heard you guys were doing a murder mystery today. I love murder mysteries. Can I join? Yes, you can, Noelle. You'll be saving the show. Excellent. I'm so I love this book so much. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'm glad to have you on today. Thank you. Well, and that's really weird. I mean, I don't know what happened. Did you see Sarah at all today? Oh, she's tied up somewhere. Anyway, let's talk about this book, which I love so much. Um, now, it's a book within a book, because it right. starts out as, how would you categorize the book, the first book in the book? That is a classic English country house mystery, Agatha Christie to a T. I started reading this book, I thought, I am reading uh, the, A Murder is Announced. That's what it felt like to me, which is one of my favorite Agatha Christie's. Um, <laughs> did you just bliss out? <laughs> I did so much. I, I was like, oh, I'm going to love this book. And I did. So it was a really fun read. Yeah. And so it starts out as this book. Mm -hmm. And there's a little bit of a flash, you know, to current times, mm -hmm. to current outside the book. Right. The editor you, of the you book. You kind of get the, the context for the manuscript of the mystery right the, the classic english country house mystery but that's embedded in this larger mystery that's taking place in contemporary time so it really does a great job of spanning the entire english murder mystery series what and what's funny to? is that it 213 mm -hmm. we get to page 213 mm -hmm. and then it goes to page six and yep. seven yep it's, and it's two different books. What had happened is that somebody murdered somebody. the author right. of the mystery. I've never done this before. I don't know how many spoilers you're allowed to give, but it yeah. is a murder mystery, so I guess that's not a spoiler. That some people die. But. Yeah, and two, because we're talking about a mystery, mm -hmm. I don't want to have too many spoilers. So, I mean... I think what we're going to talk about a lot in this book are some of the bigger issues that he brings up. And mm -hmm. two, I'm not a usual mystery reader mm -hmm. because it's so hard to find those books that have the sweet spot between, okay, this is a clue that you should pay attention to, and mm -hmm. this is not a clue you should pay attention to, where this is the clue, mm -hmm. and it jacks up the whole mystery. <laughs> How many of those That's have you come across? Though. In what? Mysteries that... Yeah. That, How uh, many... Okay, percentage points. How many mysteries do you read where it's like, okay, in 60% of them, I know who did it? I'm not that bright. So, <laughs> plus, <laughs> I get really mad if I figure out the, uh, the killer by the end or the motive or whatever it was, whatever the, the mystery is about. I want to be surprised on the last page. I want to be have that twist in the plot and go, <gasps> and that's what I'm looking for in a mystery. So I'm not trying too hard to solve it. And when every once in a while I get a book where I do solve it like really early on and I get mad. And then yeah. I just hate read the rest of the book because <laughs> I was like, well, I just have to prove myself right. And, <laughs> So I, I don't recommend that, though. Hashtag, and that not, hashtag hate read. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was almost going to say, how many books have you hate read? <laughs> <laughs> Only a few. <laughs> not that many. 
Okay. I I'm curious, though. You're not a mystery person, so how did this strike you? Did you enjoy the story, or is it, like, not... I enjoyed it, but also it's like I've got anxiety reading it in a way, really? because it's like, I don't want to miss it. Did I miss it? Am I a dork? Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, am well, I you thick? You let that go. You just, you just <laughs> embrace embrace not knowing. Just go along yeah. with the flow yeah. and let it let the story mm -hmm. take you. That's my advice. Because it's like, really, I got it at the end, and it was like, oh, <laughs> oh, I know, I should have known that. I should have well, known that. See, on the end of the of the English country house or the um, witch. Because there's two, the, two murders, two separate. At the end of the present day, or okay. the murder outside the See, murder. I didn't catch the present day one at all. That was a complete shock to me. Well, and maybe we should, just for simplicity's sake. Yes. The book is called Magpie Murders. Yes. In the English Country House manuscript that was submitted right. by Charles... Oh, no, I can't remember the author. Oh, the dead uh, guy. Who was the Conway. body? The last name was yeah. Conway. Okay. Um, well, so anyways, he... So, I guess it's Magpie Murders, and then Who Killed the Author? Mm -hmm. Who Killed the Author? It's like, oh, I should have caught that. See, I didn't, so I don't feel bad about that at all. That was... Well, did you get the Magpie Murders? I Who did, killed? but then I changed my mind. <gasps> and then I found out I had been right in the first place. So, Ooh. see, it's exactly the kind of twist that I really enjoy when I'm reading this kind of thing. So, it really just punched all my buttons for me. I really enjoyed it a lot. So Okay. Well, and the thing that I liked, and maybe, maybe this is what really kept my interest, mm -hmm. was that in the present day, you know, who killed Conway? The mm -hmm. woman that's investigating Susan Ryland. Mm-hmm. I like her character a lot. Yes, she's great. Yeah. Um, she might be one of my new feminist heroes <laughs> in you know, the literary world. Yeah, she's, she's cool. going through and she's like, all right, who killed this guy? And, you know, well, and the other thing that the trope of like the detective mystery mm -hmm. that's hard for me sometimes is like, you know, are people really going to talk? You know, where were you well, the night of the murder? That's a problem she runs into that she talks about is that in a in a book, it's all arranged for you. Like the the suspects just assume they should talk to the detective and they answer questions and he gets the information he needs and he moves on. And she finds in real life, which is, you know, in the book, that people don't uh, really They don't work honey that up way. the information. Right. It's a little bit more complicated than it is in the traditional yeah. story. So but she's a really neat character just because um, she kind of, she's a new entry into the detective. You know, we've got Poirot, we've got Miss Marple, we've got Lord Peter Whimsey, we've got Sherlock Holmes. You could just go down the list. But she's a new kind of detective that was really fun to read. So. All right. So she's got a boyfriend, mm -hmm. well, or partner or whatever right. she calls him. Andreas. Greek. Who really seems hot. Yeah. Sounds pretty uh, Sorry. That was the other thing. <laughs> what was it? Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. I've read that recently. Oh, I haven't read that one. And it has an, it's being narrated by an un, unreliable narrator. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it was like, then I started like examining Susan and it's like, yeah. oh, is she reliable? I went through that too. Is she like, telling us the truth? Supposedly she was at home reading the manuscript the weekend Alan Conway right. died, but maybe was there a clue? And that's one thing I'd love to go back and reread it and look for the things that I missed the first time and see where the clues are. But Yeah, and well, so, and then yeah, it was funny question. because she was describing her boyfriend who was mm -hmm. Greek and mm -hmm. it was like, <sighs> yeah, <laughs> and it's like, that is she telling lovely. the truth? <laughs> is she really that hot? You thought maybe she was in, she was expanding on right because it's like I would have him living in my house, <laughs> but no, they've got like this amicable mm -hmm. distance between mm -hmm. them. But there's one point in the book. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, talk about a gut punch! Where was it at? You wrote the down the exact the, quote. Yeah. That he didn't like, he didn't think mystery writing is good or worthwhile or something like that. And it's like, and she spent her entire career yeah. editing. That's how this she This is made, her love. Yeah. This is her baby. And but like, how did he phrase it? 80,000 words to find out the butler did it? Yeah. I was he like, was oh, dang. 
No wonder they don't live together. Yeah. No matter how hot he is. <laughs> well, they don't now. Don't yeah. <laughs> but, well, and that kind of leads to the question. You know, Andreas talks about how he teaches writing and he teaches Antigone. And the ha- he teaches, hot boyfriend. I forget what all, you know, he lists these highbrow ancient Greek authors. He does the classic like, literature. Yeah, he teaches classic much. literature. So. Oh. Oh, hey, Sarah, from, that's, you're not, no, you're, you're in the, that's nice of in, you to say that you're in the airport. <laughs> we know you're tied up in the broom closet. Thanks yeah. for leaving her on the phone. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, you can't leave Sarah without her phone. She yeah. That. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Ow. <laughs> Where was I? Well, um, in literature, her boyfriend, right. Andreas, teaches literature right. and completely poo-poos Oh, yeah. Hi, Corey. This is yeah. a great read ICT book. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot to look up which number it was. It's it's habit. number two. Oh, good job. Yeah. So, oh. Okay, so anyway, Andreas. He teaches poo-poo's literature. He, he's the classics guy. He poo-poos the genre. And it kind of leads into this discussion, or it could, if you were so inclined to go there, about whether genre writing is any good. Is it worthwhile? And my answer is yes. It's wonderful, and you should read what you want to read. <laughs> and don't let other people tell you what's good and what's not. Well, so. and it's funny because I've taken literature courses mm-hmm. where it was like they just sucked the joy yeah. You can examine something that will suck the mm-hmm. joy right out of the work. Mm-hmm. I don't care what it is. A movie, music. Well, and, you know, I was an English major. And Hi, Laura. I love, uh, as much as the next English major, I love going through something and finding the symbolism and all this. It's fun to me, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy a little popcorn now and again. And I think that one thing that this book does really well is that it combines the popcorn and the meat, the really juicy stuff that you can really go deep if you want to, or you can just have a good time. It's one of those pools that has the deep end and the shallow Mm -hmm. end. There you go. Yeah. Well, and I tell you what, he wrote the Alex Ryder books. Right. He, um, which I think that was the best action writing I'd ever, you know, some of the best action books that I'd Mm -hmm. ever read. I've not read those. That's definitely, now that I know he wrote them, I will definitely be picking those up. Well, and then I didn't know that he had written, um, he'd been licensed. Oh, hi, Diane. (laughs) Hi. Sorry, lots of great people here. Um, He had written, he had been licensed by the Ian Fleming. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, to write the James Bond. The state was, to write the James Bond book. And it was like, dang, I need to go back and read that. He was also licensed by the Arthur Conan Doyle family to write Moriarty, which is another one. Um, one of our coworkers was telling me this morning, you have to read Moriarty. So Moriarty <laughs> by Anthony Horowitz is on my list of things. In there fact, goes I, that TBR file. <laughs> I placed that one this morning, so maybe in a couple days. Um, well, and, and two... One of the things that happens to our dead author is that we discover that he's disenchanted with what he's written. Right. And that's something that comes up a lot in the classic genre because Agatha Christie hated Hercule Poirot. No, really. Oh, um, you're kidding me. I read recently that uh, Arthur Conan Doyle did not care for Sherlock Holmes that much. <laughs> you know, they cuz they get locked into these characters and they have to they just have to keep writing it cuz that's what the public wants and that's what the publisher will pay for. But they are bored and they want to do something very much like this character. I mean, he's playing out that trope. He's writing the books for money, but he really wants to do something else. Now, in this book, that author is not that good. The book that he wrote. Okay, the not book that, that he wrote. Yeah. That slide. Did you mark it? I marked it. It was hideous. It was hideous. <laughs> and and it it's has- so funny because this is his pride and joy. A mustache is smeared across his upper lip as if it crawled out of his nostril, taken one look back at its own progenitor, lost all hope, and died. See, I have to wonder about the construction of this book because... Um, is that like just straight out of Anthony Horowitz's head and it hasn't been edited yet and that's why it's horrible? Or did he write it horrible on purpose? I mean, did the horrible come naturally to him? 
I mean, I would love to know some more Dear about Dear Anthony Horowitz, <laughs> Please tell us. does the horrible come naturally? No, it doesn't. I thought this was a I, really well written book. I, I mean, it love, sucked me in. Yeah, I would love to talk about the process of writing these intertwined. Because that's a third book that's in the middle of the book. So. You know what, though? If I would give this book any, like, dem demerits? Demerits, it would okay. be because. And it's so ambitious mm -hmm. it and it's so. so hard to keep everything straight. Mm -hmm. And I really did find myself, it, post-its are a friend, just take <laughs> them off before you check them in. Yeah, don't turn them in like that. And mark the place, cause it's like, I like how he goes through, or the, the detectives are like, this person, you know, their motives are blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. They're, you know. Making a list yeah. of the characters. What do yeah. they call that? In, is there... Making a list of the characters. That's what they call that. Sorry. <laughs> okay. But I think that's what it's called. You learn something new every day. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Corey, I didn't see your comment. You yes. Off my night sent. Yes, you should. You should Definitely. go home and start reading immediately. Definitely but do. Don't tell your boss I said that. <laughs> <laughs> all right so what else oh gosh read your genre um do you oh, think humans crave mystery and bloodshed all the time yes why do we do that i don't know i mean i think we do but i don't have any reason why is it because my life is so calm and peaceful that i'm looking for a little excitement i i don't know do you think we do well and it's funny because in the in the book, mm -hmm. she talks to a detective, and he's mm -hmm. like, "There's mm -hmm. less than a thousand murders in England each year, right. and there's a 63 million people on this island. Why? Why do we? You know, mm -hmm. murders don't happen that often. Is that why they're entertaining? Because they're rare. Mm -hmm. There's one and theory that we we are trying to plan ahead that if we think about all the bad things, the bad things won't happen to us if we plan for them. That's, That's true. That's possibility. That's a good point. So, huh. Yeah. That was well, pretty deep, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? It, I liked this book because of its depth. Mm -hmm. I mean, it. if I had just... Would you have liked Magpie Murders all on its own? Yeah, I would have. But it's my favorite. It's one of my favorite genres. So, I mean, like I said, I started reading the book within the book, and my first thought was, this is just murder at the vicarage, and uh, a murder is announced. All my favorite novels just combined into one glorious homage. Okay, so, so list your top three. If you liked this and you've uh -huh. never read mysteries in this vein what would be the top three books that somebody should read oh why did you not warn me about this question <laughs> because it's funnier to see you squirm okay think uh, about it and i'm going uh, to talk about okay, next month's book okay. Go for it. which is never enough flamingos by janelle diller um it's got an animal on the cover so that falls into our read ictb oh, good. i was looking for an animal on the cover excellent this book rocks she's it's a kansas notable book and what she did is she's written about the mennonites not the amish and it's the um it's deep in the uh, dust bowl time and the family's hurting and how are they going to make it through this tough difficult time well it's cat and she she's she's going to help the family out but it's in the context of this small town, small community because of their faith. Um, it's funny because it's, I started reading it and couldn't put it down. Okay. It has great, like, cool. I hate to say like colloquialisms. Grandma was a treasure full of, or had a, was an attic full of treasures, but nobody knew where the drawstring was anymore. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> well, even the title. Mom was a flamingo in a sea of turkeys. <laughs> and so there's never enough flamingos. Her mom's gonna, the best. I'm going to enjoy this. So, yeah, you're really going to love it. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Cool. Yeah, see? Yeah. And, yeah, cool. love that. <laughs> okay, so I got my three. What are your three? I'm going to go with Murder at the Vicarage which is the first Jane Marple mystery by Agatha Christie. 
Murder at the Vicarage. I'm going to go with Murder Must Advertise by uh, not by Lord Peter Wincy, by uh, Dorothy Sayers, who is Lord Peter Wincy was the character. And then I'm just going to say any Sherlock Holmes. Pick up, uh, there's all kinds of Sherlock Holmes collections, but you got to have the classic influence there. So go with Sherlock Holmes. So those are my, my three, if you've never read. Murder there's Must my Adver- TBR pile. Murder <laughs> Must Advertise has humor in it. Murder at the Vicarage is just a classic whodunit. And Sherlock Holmes is Sherlock Holmes, and you should read that. So, those, okay, that's, that's my advice. That's good advice. Thanks. Read more. Yeah, read more. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's why we're here, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, and that and your mom. Her mom, Hi, mom. rocks. Hi, Noelle's mom. Hope you're here. <laughs> Hi, mom. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you need to go let Sarah out of the closet oh, that you God. tied her up yes, in. Yes, I will. Fine. Okay. Join us next time for. Um, read, or sorry, for ICTBC, <laughs> forgot my, your tag yeah, line. my tagline, yeah. and thanks for being here. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. Thank you for letting Thank me come Thank you for talk joining us. Yeah.